Aloha kako, ciao tutti, hello everyone. Master Gina Mazzetti here with you again today from beautiful Honolulu. And today I'm so excited to be talking to you all about the earth element as we continue on our feng shui journey for health together. So I just wanted to go over a little bit about the earth element. So as we started in our 21 day feng shui challenge, if you haven't seen that yet, you can go back um, to the YouTube videos and watch our 21 day feng shui challenge where I, in a slightly dyslexic way, go over <laughs> all of the five elements and which areas of the home they relate to. So there are different areas of feng shui, and this is just my method for what we're doing here now, which is clearing the clutter and improving our overall health. So the earth element that we're going to be focusing on today has to do primarily with the health of our stomach, our spleen and our pancreas. So in Western medicine, we don't really talk about the spleen too much, but your spleen has many functions in Chinese medicine. So there's so many things, but one of the main things that I would like to point out has to do with fertility and also your vascular health, your uterine health, your bladder health, a lot of things depend on the spleen. So that is why I want us to make sure as we're going through our feng shui of our homes, I'll just summarize again. First, we begin with the wood element, which is our patio, our plants, paperwork. It could also be clothing. The second one is the fire element. And that is, in, in my way of doing things, the living room, because it's the most active area of the home. And today we're focusing on the earth element. And in my way, of doing feng shui, the earth element is the kitchen. If you have any issues in your body or your life where things are not in the right place, for example, if your bladder is a little bit too low. This happens a lot for women, after childbirth especially. If your uterus is prolapsed, your, your uterus is a little low, or your uterus could be tilting backwards. If you have some kind of bleeding problem, this is the blood, not staying in the veins. Usually it's our veins that leak of something, but we could also be having bleeding from our arteries. But if any kind of bleeding issue could also be related to the spleen health, then we also have our taste. So if you'll remember last time I talked about the tongue has to do with the fire element, but your taste has to do with the spleen. So maybe you've lost some flavor, like lost some ability to taste. This has to do with the spleen. Um, there are some areas where the nose also has to do with the spleen. Um, one way that this might show up, you might notice if you eat something sweet 
and then you start sneezing, that's your spleen. Okay, there are different ways um, to look at the nose, but that specifically, that means that's your body telling you no more sugar. Okay, so what does this have to do with feng shui? Well, I happen to be in this amazing, beautiful kitchen today. So I thought, what a perfect place to do the earth element feng shui video. We were talking about cleaning things out and clearing, and we're gonna do a practice too, and we're gonna do a little bit of a different practice today because I didn't want you guys to get too bored. Um, the kitchen needs to be clean. Okay, now I hope, I have a friend that I just actually helped her to clean her kitchen a little bit, not her personal kitchen, a kitchen in one of her rental apartments. I hope she doesn't mind me talking about this. Okay, so um, love you. Um, so a few days ago, I happened to be out for a walk with a friend and, and she said, oh, do you mind if we stop by my rental apartment quickly because I need to do something there? So I said, okay, sure, no problem. So um, we go in and she's working on something, you know, that she had to do there. And so I just was, you know, just looking around. I hadn't been in this apartment before, but I noticed immediately that the stove didn't look quite clean. And I thought that this was really odd because this is a very cute little apartment and she has an amazing cleaning woman but it's an old stove and I have the same stove in my one of my rental apartments. It's like a, a stove where there's an electric burner and then in order to clean the stove pans, you have to unplug the burner, take the pans out and wash them, right? If you spill something on the stove, you have to clean it up right away, otherwise it kind of gets kicked on. And then I thought, okay, well, while she's doing her thing, I have a few minute, extra minutes, I'll just, you know, quickly remove the burners and clean out the stove pans. <laughs> this is how we are. We just, we like to help each other with things. So I didn't even ask her, I just started doing it. And then as I took the stove pans out, I noticed that underneath the stove pans, it was also not clean. So I was thinking, okay, maybe we need to talk to the cleaning woman. Maybe she doesn't understand this type of stove because maybe it's a little bit too old fashioned. You know, now most stoves are glass top. You just wipe them off, right? But um, anyway, so then as I was cleaning, my because the stove is right next to the wall. So my arm touched the wall and I was like, oh, and I called my friend and I'm like, the wall is dirty. And she said, I know I need to replace it. I called a contractor and it's going to cost me $3,000 to tear out all the tile and replace it. I said, okay, honey, I love you so much. Let's go to the hardware store. <laughs> so that night after I finished work, we met, we went to the hardware store and we got some oven cleaner. Now I wouldn't recommend this for everyone, <laughs> but I said, how did this wall get so greasy? And she said, you know, I think it was from when I had a long-term tenant there and she was there for a few years. And then afterwards, I just could never get the wall clean. So I said, okay. And, and it was her actually, she thought of the oven cleaner. I said, okay, great. Let's get the oven cleaner and some scouring pads and some SOS pads and some gloves. And, you know, we go back to the apartment, we open up all the windows and we sprayed the tile down all around the oven and the stove with the oven cleaner. I was reading the can and it says, if your oven is cold, which this is cold because it wasn't actually the oven. If your oven is cold and it's particularly dirty, you'll want to leave the oven cleaner on overnight. I said, okay, let's go. And because the fumes were getting to us, I said, let's go really quickly. And then we'll come back in the morning and clean it. 
saved $3,000. All we did was scrub it down and it was like brand new. In the meantime, we got new pans for the stove. Some of the burners weren't quite, anyway, we got some replacement burners, um, which another friend had told me about that a uh, couple of years ago too. If you have an electric stove with burners that plug in and out and a burner burns out, just unplug it, take it to the hardware store, and the, you'll find one that is exactly the same as, as your old one. There are different kinds, so you have to make sure to take the old one to the store, make sure it matches. The little prongs have to match. We put the whole stove back together. It's like she has a brand new kitchen. So don't let things build up in your kitchen. Now this, you know, it wasn't her kitchen, it was a rental kitchen, but you know, if you have rental properties too, also make sure that your cleaning person knows how to clean if there's like a buildup, you know, if an old tenant has moved out and you need to get somebody in there that really knows how to do a deep cleaning, like this had to take two days because the cleaner had to sit overnight. So um, another thing is like for me in my kitchen, I have a lot of stuff because I love cooking and I love baking and I have like cover, I love dishes. So I have to make sure to go regularly through my cupboards, make sure there isn't like, you know, an old bag of flour sitting in the back of the cupboard that I've forgotten about or something. I have to make sure to take all my dishes out, make sure, you know, that they stay clean. Um, I kind of rotate them. And then I take the drawers and I take all the silverware out of the drawers. I mean, this is, you know, don't do this in one day, but this is why we we're doing our 15 minute feng shui. I take like, you know, maybe you could do one drawer a day. You know, I take the uh, silverware out of the drawers and uh, make sure the inside of the drawer is all clean. Make sure that the little trays where the silverware goes is all clean. If I have like, you know, some things that have kind of accumulated in there, like, you know, random plastic um, forks or old chopsticks or whatever, you know, throw them away. And, um, you know, if you have maybe like some drawers where you keep like your tea, go through it and check the expiration date, make sure it's nice and fresh. And um, for me, I actually line my drawers with like a, a little drawer liner. And so that makes it nice and it keeps the drawer cleaner and it's easier to, you know, things don't slide around so much. Another thing about the kitchen, just in terms of like basic feng shui, I mean, you can get this information from anyone, but don't have mirrors in your kitchen, especially don't have a mirror reflecting your stove. That's just basic feng shui, which I don't really need to, to talk about these kinds of basic things, but just briefly. Another thing is like your knives, like sometimes I'll go into people's homes and they have like this, um, like a magnetic strip on the wall and they have all the knives. Don't do that. Don't do that, please. Any sharp objects, make sure they're like away in a cupboard. Like here, I'm staying at my, another friend's house right now. I'm so lucky. I, I'm house sitting these two amazing cats. But like they have their knives like in a butcher block in the cupboard, you know? And so just, and you know, just like this kitchen, like, okay, they do have like their dishes out in this open cupboard, but it's just very nice and very pretty and well-spaced, you know? But just make sure like, <laughs> to clean your cupboards inside and out and keep most things in the cupboard unless they can be displayed out like really nicely like this. And then, you know, I also, I love to have some little bit of herbs or something, or maybe like a little flower or something like that. I love having herbs in my kitchen, not too many, but you know, just like maybe a pot of thyme or a pot of rosemary, you know, maybe one in one area, one in another area or something. Things that smell like really beautiful and fragrant. Um, so I just, I just really want to stress, like keep your kitchen clean and tidy, especially the places where you may not always see, like in my house, like I have to climb up, um, like on a little step ladder to get to the top cupboards and stuff. But I, I go through those 
you know, even if it's that's like, you know, maybe like, um, you know, some things that I just don't use too often, I put up there, but I make sure I go up there a couple of times a year and make sure that it's clean because you don't want any type of like excessive dust or clutter or um, spider webs or whatever to be accumulating in your kitchen because again, it can affect your pancreas, it can affect your sugar, your ability to regulate sugar. It can even cause you to worry excessively. So if you have a tendency uh, to worry about things a lot, make sure that your kitchen is calm. Like you can see this kitchen I'm in, it's like very calm and relaxing and inviting. Make sure that your kitchen is, aside from the sirens outside, because I'm in Waikiki. Um, but make sure that your kitchen is like a calm, relaxing environment that you can come home to where you just feel like, ah, oh, you know, whatever worries of the day, they can just like, you know, go, you know, leave them at your front door. When you enter your home, you feel calm and peaceful. Okay, so now let us do a practice. And I just wanna say, because I don't tend to say this too often, but like this video if you can, share it, leave a comment, email me back and let me know what you think about this. Let me know what your questions are. Um, I can answer like some basic little other feng shui things, but my main thing that I wanna focus on is just making sure that things are like clean and tidy and organized. If you don't know how to clean or organize, just ask someone. Because like my, my friend that I went to her rental apartment the other day, she said she never knew <clears throat> that, like we pulled the stove out and the, you know it was dirty on the floor underneath the stove. And, um, and she said, oh, was it easy to pull the stove out? Yes, it's easy to pull the stove out. I mean, depending on your stove, that one was easy to pull out. My stove at my house, it cannot move. But if you have a stove that is movable, you know, move it out, clean under it. If you have a refrigerator that you can move, make sure it's clean underneath and in behind and the walls next to it and everything. She said she just didn't know um, that it could be cleaned or how to clean it. She thought that the tile was ruined and it would have to be replaced at a cost of $3,000. So, you know, just ask around, ask some friends, watch some videos or like whatever, just peep, your friends are there to help you. Let them help you. Open your heart, open your home, open your mind to receiving the help that you need. And if I can help you in any way, please don't hesitate to call me. I can always do a personal consultation, either like through video or if you're in, on Oahu, I can come in person. And there is a fee for this service, but if you need me, I'm definitely here for you. Okay, so now we're gonna do our practice. So as I said today, I have a little different practice for you. So this practice is great, not only for balancing the feng shui of your home, particularly your kitchen, but it's also really good for your spleen, stomach, and pancreas health. This means it's good for your vascular system because your spleen helps to keep your blood in your blood vessels. It helps you to relieve worry and also as a side benefit, it could help you to sleep better too, because when you're less worried, you're able to sleep better. Okay, so this song goes like this. P, P, I, P is the spleen, okay? So it's just P, the spleen, and then some other sounds to create a, um, a rotating, um, energy. So it's P, Ya, Yo, Tao. Okay, P, P, I, Ya, Y, A, Yo, Y, O, U, Tao. T, A, O, P, Ya, Yo, Tao. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to your stomach, spleen, pancreas area is under your left hand side rib cage area. 
and you're going to put one hand over your spleen, stomach, pancreas area, and the other hand over your lower abdomen. And then if your kitchen isn't the way you want it to be, visualize that it's the way you want it to be in your mind, close your eyes, let your heart and mind relax down into your lower abdomen, visualize beautiful golden yellow sparkling light like uh what is yellow i mean i could say hibiscus but like a sparkling like a yellow diamond or a yellow sapphire or a citrine one of those yellow sparkly stones imagine this beautiful golden yellow light is shining into your home shining into your kitchen shining into your body improving your earth element feng shui health okay and then i'll start singing and you can join in when you feel ready and if you're lying down just make sure to sing along silently this is a great practice you can sing this song at any time that you're going about your work during the day while you're driving while you're walking while you're doing the dishes <laughs> while you're tidying the feng shui of your kitchen and more okay so let us say hello dear soul mind and body of my kitchen i love you honor you and appreciate you thank you thank you thank you for providing an amazing place for me to cook and to keep all of my healthy food in my clean refrigerator thank you thank you thank you love you love you love you Okay, and then just take a nice, relaxing breath, and we'll begin. With all the love and respect in your heart for your kitchen and your body. Piyo da, piyo da, piyo. absorb the frequency of beautiful yellow golden light that you are creating and inviting in with the sound of your voice remember the human voice creates light let us bring this light into our home and our body at a very high vibratory frequency of love peace and harmony Pia yo dao, 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 Pia yo dao. Changing our frequency Bringing love and light to our kitchens Piyo dao Piyo dao Piyo 
呀哈哟道，皮呀哟道。I'm in love, my kitchen. My kitchen loves me. My kitchen is filled with love and joy. I love my kitchen. P I O D A O P I O D A O P I O D A O How, how, how? We always end our practice by saying how three times. How is spelled H A O and means good job, well done, perfect, get well for you and your home. So wrapping it up once again. Your kitchen is part of the earth element in in my little feng shui world, and by cleaning, tidying, and organizing your kitchen, you could improve the health of your digestive system and your vascular system as it relates to the spleen. You could improve your sense of taste. And you could improve your blood sugar regulation. A lot of things worry can be relieved. So don't have any sharp objects out in your kitchen. Don't have a mirror reflecting your stove ever, please, at all.、Um, what are some other important things? I can't really think of anything right now. I mean, there are some very important feng shui things, but you can look those up anywhere.、So、I just wanted to focus on like. The things that I really specialize in, so the health and how it relates to your home. So I love you all, honor you all, and appreciate you all. Greatest love in doing your feng shui for your kitchen and improving your digestive health. I will see you in the next video. Ahui ho, ciao.